So, one of the dilemmas, and I don't have that information on the, uh, the thing, but that we faced with, is segment lengths. You know, every time I come out here, I have to think, um, you know, or I have to do mathematics uh, and uh, say, well, how big am I making my segments? Oh, God, what is it for a six inch bowl? Or what is it for a five inch bowl? Or a five inch ring? Or uh, a seven inch ring? Or an eight inch ring? The answer to that, you know, it's very simple. Really, it is pi. Wait a minute. There's a drawback with that. It's That's not true. Pi does not give you the exact measurements you're going to need for a ring. Now, why is that? It's a mat mathematical formula. The reason is, pi will give you measurements of a circle. And when you make rings, it's not, per se, a perfect circle. You have these voids. So if you, if I did the formula for this size uh, uh, ring, per se, uh, let's say it's an 8 inch. I'll use that formula because I remember that one right off the top of my head. And if I do the 8 inch ring, okay, 8 inch diameter, times the 3.14 it tells me that each segment and then divide it by the 8 rings so you have the diameter you divide that uh, uh, you multiply that times pi you get an answer for that and then you divide it by how many rings you're going to have so in this case 8 you come up with the answer as 3.14 length over here well if you go ahead and you make those cuts exactly to that you end up where your ring is actually by the time you threw it up and you uh, cut it up on your uh, make a true a true circle you are under that dimension a formula that I know that works for me and it changes based on how many rings you have but if you take let's say you want to end up with an 8 inch ring you want to end up with an 8 inch ring you add 1 8 of an inch for an 8 segment a 1 8 of an inch per inch of circumference so if you do the pi instead of doing by 8 uh, uh, for an 8 inch ring you do that for 8 plus 8 eighths, which is another inch, and you do that by 9. All of a sudden, you come up with a ring that's going to be very, very, very close to the dimensions that you had in mind. That works for 8 segments with a 1 eighth, adding 1 eighth of your circumference. If you do, for instance, a 10 segment well you don't need one eight anymore because a 10 segment ring you know the the, the angles are already getting tighter together it doesn't matter how big it is but the points are closer to a true circle so on a 10 or a 12 uh, segment ring you would add 1 16th of an inch for the run and so on and so forth by the time you get to a 16 segment ring, well, you don't need to add anything to it because you are so close to a true circle. On this case, you want an 8 inch ring with 16 segments and you do just the 8 inch times the 3.14 divided by the 16, the measurement that it gives you is there. You can use that measurement and you're going to be so close to what your final dimension of your ring is going to be. You're still going to lose a little bit, but it's so minute, and we are woodworkers, we're not steel workers, this is not precision where you're going to be putting it in, but it's a formula that's going to keep most of your stock, or your material, without losing it. Um, you're not going to be buying precious wood 
Redwood, Bloodwood, Purple Heart, whatever, and you're not going to be uh, putting it as shavings on your floor. So calculate your rings fairly close to what you need and work with that. One thing that I do um, is I try not to focus. Uh, I don't necessarily focus exactly the dimensions of the ring that I want. I oversize my rings a little bit purposely. And do this sort of stuff. Now this one, this was already made up. I had two outside pieces with a red in the center. I glued that up. It was a strip, uh, uh, yay long. Uh, clamped it, glued it up, and whenever I needed it for a particular ring, I would just cut it up to the lengths that I needed and glue it up. Now here's a perfect example of a leftover from a ring that was you know a little oversized not because I mismeasured but because I sometimes especially with fancy rings I will oversize purposely and part it out on my lathe so I end up with an another ring just a, a slightly different size so I will use this up somewhere else okay so instead of doing the pi by six which is my final results that I want for a ring actually that formula was for five uh, 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 so a five I did uh, five and a half inches so um, if I measure two and one eighth of an inch which is I believe to be that formula right there I don't have my calculator but if I go two and one uh, one eighth I think I come up with a five inch uh, ring. So I'm going to test that and I'm gonna show you the ring uh, being put together. So bring my stop in, lock it up, make sure that it's tight against my segment, lock it. I am set with the edge of this cut right here. I don't have to bring it up to the blade because this is, this curve is true to the blade. So let me, make these uh, uh, few cuts real quick. I wanted to see what size ring I ended up with. I'm sorry about that. Five and one sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so on oh, I was on a clamp, but five and a sixteenth pi plus that uh, one eighth of an inch per run works pretty close to come up with what you want for your dimensions.